Just as much as we crave safety and stability, it's also human nature to crave newness and adventure. So on one hand, we want like safety and we want to stay where we are. And on the other hand, we want like new things to try it, try different things. You're listening to Get Your Marriage On, the fun and spicy podcast, bringing you new tools and fresh ideas so that you can be the sexiest couple you know. Everyone, welcome to this episode of Get Your Marriage On. This is episode 34, Horizontal and Vertical Novelty. And this one's a solo podcast. I want to try these once in a while. Anyway, let me know what you think. Anyway, I love the topic of sex and sexuality, if you can't tell. I think it's amazing and God-given because it's like a core part of who we are and what makes us human. And I believe healthy sexuality has this expansive and life-giving quality about it. And I think it's awesome that we can develop our sexual capacities within our marriage relationships. I believe a great sex life leads one to be honest, true, chaste, benevolent, and to do good to all. A great sex life helps us better endure all the things that life throws at us. And it gives us depth and hope and meaning to our precious marriage vows and covenants. Building a great sex life is not only rewarding, but I also think it's like the greatest challenge that we face in our lifetime. Uh, and by the way, if you're feeling anxious or frustrated or feel like you're being stretched or maybe even pressured around sex in your marriage, congratulations. Your marriage is working like it should. That's perfectly normal because it's like this friction that's designed to help you grow up in marriage. And I think that's one of the great designs that God has made for even if you're experiencing differences in sexuality in your marriages. They're kind of to refine you, like iron sharpens iron. When sex is good, it feels like coming home. It's very intimate, and it's like a safe place where you can express yourself and to be one with the special someone that you love more than anyone else. And as humans, we crave the safety and stability. I don't know of many things sweeter than coming home to an intimate and loving embrace from my lover after like a really hard day. That's like really special. And paradoxically, just as much as we crave safety and stability, it's also human nature to crave newness and adventure. So on one hand, we want like safety and we wanna stay where we are. And on the other hand, we want like new things to try, try different things. And it's, so it's normal to crave novelty and besides, who wants to eat the same meal every day for the rest of their life? Like, really? We like variety in our food. We like variety in our clothes, in our houses, in our cars. Some people even just quit their jobs because they're bored of the old one and they want to try something new. So it's, it's, we like newness. So it's probably no surprise if you feel like you crave novelty in sex in your relationship. Like you desire new experiences with your spouse. Besides, seeking newness is like the fun plot twists in a movie that keep the story interesting and keep things progressing. And you kind of want that in your marriage too. It makes a relationship fun and exciting again. And seeking novelty can be good and feel like a breath of fresh air in an otherwise stuffy sex life. And as my friend Laura Brotherson teaches, variety is a key to vi vitality when it comes to a long lasting marriage. So when you're first married, there's lots of novelty. Everything is really new. This is a new experience for you two, and you're two adjusting to each other. And there's a lot of like uh, uh, a lot of um, a lot of anxiety, perhaps at first. But you like work through it, and there's a lot of laughter, and you kind of learn to like build a new life together right up front. There's lots of novelty, and it's really exciting. But over time. Um, we look for patterns where we feel safe. Um, things kind of become, we build up routines, which are not bad. They're good because we like to look for familiar patterns and find things that work for us. As far as intimacy is concerned, you also fall into similar patterns where you end up like covering up the parts of yourself that you don't like your spouse seeing as much because you don't like those parts in yourself. Or you like turn a blind eye to certain things of your spouse and you, and you stop like really like staying curious with your spouse and who they are. And you start taking them for granted a little bit. Um, anyway, 
it's, it's like our emotional self and it's our thinking and it's about like who we're becoming. And we stop pushing ourselves to grow because we stop taking risks because risks are scary and not always safe. And sometimes we don't, we're not completely honest. We like hold back our thinking and we don't share it with our spouse because it may not be completely safe. And we, anyway, we stop investing in really trying to understand our spouse in the name of familiarity. And that's when sex can get really routine, blah, and boring. Today, I want to talk to you about two ways you can increase novelty and excitement into your marriage, like fresh oxygen to your marriage, which will help you keep your marriage strong for the long haul. So um, the two ways are horizontal novelty and vertical novelty. Horizontal novelty is most common, and that's what most people think about when you talk about sexual novelty. This can be like new positions, new lingerie, toys, locations, or gazillion other things. There's like no end to the sexual novelty available in our day and age. Um, it can also include a, a new awesome app like Intimately Us. So novelty is great. And there's actually nothing wrong with horizontal novelty alone. There's definitely a time and a place for it. And hey, it can be really pleasurable and fun. And you get to broaden your horizons a bit. And it might be just the thing you need. A healthy sex life includes some horizontal novelty. So if you're looking for some ideas on more horizontal novelty in, in your marriage, I suggest you and your spouse create a sex bucket list together. Write down all the things that you both want to try or get better at doing, and then work on them. If you want, you can use the Intimately Us app to, to catalog all those. There's a sexy bucket list part inside the app. Or you can do like what another couple did. They, on the wall of their bathroom, in their master bathroom, they mounted a whiteboard and they would write messages back, to, back and forth to each other. But also that's kind of where they kept a, like a tally of all the, the, their sexy bucket list things of they wanted to try. And they can like add little notes and, and little annotations to, to that list. Anyway, uh, fun ideas. So create that bucket list. Then once you have your bucket list, you can plan getaways or vacations around trying to check off items off your sexy bucket list. And, um, or you can do what like another couple did where they have a savings jar in their master closet. And every time they have sex, they put a dollar in the jar. And after time, it adds up. And then they take that money and spend it on something sexy for, uh, together. And anyway, whatever you do, make it fun and explore and just really get curious with each other and what you want to try and do. Horizontal novelty, though, just to explain, also has its limitations. Horizontal novelty is usually really pleasurable up front, but is low meeting and low satisfaction over time. So have you ever bought a new car, moved into a new house, or started a new routine? And at first, it's really exciting, but over time, that car is just a car, and that house well, it's just a house, and that new routine is either non-existent or doesn't feel new anymore. So that newness wears off, and that's normal, and that's normal because there's something superficial about seeking horizontal novelty. Think of horizontal novelty like a really like good dessert. It's great to have dessert, right? It's good to have once in a while, but if your whole diet was only dessert and pursuing the next desserts, what would that do to you? Uh, no need to answer. You'll soon find out that just seeking desserts and desserts only won't gratify you or keep you healthy long term. If you make horizontal novelty in sex your main pursuit, it can turn into an insatiable pursuit. It's like a leaky bucket that you'll never be able to fill. I just want to be clear here. There is nothing wrong with seeking this type of horizontal novelty. But if you derive your sense of aliveness of, in your sex life, by the novel things that you're doing alone, you're gonna burn out your marriage pretty quickly. And that brings me to the second type, vertical novelty. If horizontal novelty is like water skiing, vertical novelty is like scuba diving. As Dr. Jennifer Finlayson, Finlayson Fife says, it's about seeking the treasure within the same terrain. It's pursuing the beauty and wonder that lies within the normal and the ordinary 
It's finding that sense of aliveness within the person right in front of you, your spouse. Most people get bored of their sex life because they've stopped putting in the effort to really see their spouse at a different level, or they've stopped letting their spouse see them at a deeper level. When you start to take someone for granted, they become like a two-dimensional person, like just a cartoon character to you. Vertical novelty adds depth. It creates, makes that two-dimensional person three-dimensional. Um, and it forces you to like really be awake and alert to the kind of person that they really are. Unlike horizontal novelty, which is really pleasurable up front, but low in meaning and satisfaction over time, Vertical novelty takes a lot of work up front, but it yields its fruits later on. It might require you, though, to confront your anxieties, challenge your thinking, challenge you to see the goodness in your spouse, especially when you find it hard to do, or decide to deal with those issues that you've been avoiding. And I think we all have a lot of issues we've been avoiding in our relationship. Frankly, some couples find it easier, cheaper, and faster just to buy a new vibrator than to really invest in knowing and being known by their spouse. Some couples would rather keep things safe and superficial in their relationship, and they end up creating a dead marriage. It feels exposing when you have to be authentic with your spouse or to say what you really honestly think and believe, knowing it may not go over very well. So it takes a bit of tolerance to, uh, to tolerate that level of exposure. And vertical novelty by the way, is not for the faint at heart, it's not for wimps, but the effects of seeking vertical novelty in your relationship are much longer lasting and much more deeply meaningful. So it's totally worth that investment and worth that risk. So let me give you a few examples. Uh, My amazing wife, Emily's career is full-time super mom to six children, our, our children ages 16 to four. And there's been several times when Emily goes on a trip and I get to be Mr. Mom for a few days. So that means uh, cleaning, cooking a lot of meals, changing diapers, cleaning stains off the carpet, being the taxi driver to take our kids to practice, listening to teenage children and their latest dramas, uh, reading lots of books, bath time, uh, more cleaning, more laundry. And anyway, it's exhausting. Um, but I'm happy to do it because it gives me a newfound appreciation for my wife. I I spent a few days in her shoes and what she goes through, and it makes me realize what a remarkable woman I've actually married. And I'm actually really grateful. She chooses every day to take this challenging and thankless career without any complaint. So I gotta tell you, making love to a woman like this after spending a few days in her shoes is very different because I see her now as a new person. She's like a new person to me because she has a lot of depth. And I, for a moment, I get a glimpse at her great capacity for compassion. And that, that's pretty sexy. There was also a time not too long ago where I took a risk in a business venture. So before I did it, I talked to my wife about it. Uh, before I made the decision, she, wa- she had her reservations about it, but she ended up supporting my decision. So I went with it and things didn't turn out like the way I had hoped. So in that moment, I was feeling really hurt and really vulnerable, telling her that, you know, she was probably right and this thing didn't work out. And it was so easy for her at that moment when I was really raw and showing my soft underbelly, she could have said, see, I told you so, but she didn't. Instead, she like, she didn't do any of that. She just loved me anyway. And knowing that I can be loved by a woman uh, despite all my flaws and warts and imperfections and everything kind of gives a new dimension to her. And so when we make love to a woman like that, I know she's on my side, that she's got my back, even if things don't go very well. And I got to say, that's a huge aphrodisiac. A third example that I thought of for vertical novelty is in the movie A Walk to Remember. I don't know if you've seen this movie. It's a great chick flick if you're into those. Um, In the movie, there's two main characters. You have Landon and Jamie. They're both seniors in high school, and Landon is the bad boy looking for trouble. And Jamie is a straight-laced preacher's daughter. 
Anyway, a series of circumstances forces Jamie and Landon together in the same place. And at first, they hate each other. They're like oil and water. They don't mix. But things change when Landon finds out that Jamie has a terminal illness and she doesn't have a lot of time left before she dies. And so Jamie's put together like a list of things she wants to get done before she dies. So you see in the movie, Landon builds a new telescope for her. He dances with her. He takes her across a state line so she can straddle two states at once so she can be in two places at once and does like a dozen other crazy things with her. The thing is, Jamie is still Jamie and Landon mm -hmm. is still Landon. It's just that once Landon and Jamie each took off their masks and started to really get to know each other and allow the other person to know them, that's when they found a new depth and interest in that relationship. And they started to see things that they didn't see before. That's like what vertical novelty can be like for your marriage. So if you're looking for some specific ideas to cultivate more vertical novelty in your marriage, try, I don't know, visiting your spouse at work if you normally don't and seeing them give a presentation. You wanna look for opportunities to see your spouse in a new light. Or go on a date that includes meaningful conversation. And if you need some help, the Intimately Us app has lots of conversation starters to get you going. Be a Sherlock Holmes for a week and journal meaningful things that you notice about your spouse that you haven't seen before. And most importantly, you're going to find vertical novelty by cultivating appreciation and gratitude for your spouse. And getting curious instead of reactive when your spouse makes you anxious. A lot of this might require you to put off an entitled attitude when you unrealistically expect your spouse to be someone different than who they are. You're going to need to stop seeing your spouse as the fantasy version of what you think they are or hope they are, and instead try to see them for the real person that they are. All right. In conclusion, a great marriage has this healthy blend of vertical and horizontal novelty. Horizontal is pleasurable and fun up front, but low in meeting and um, doesn't last a long time. However, vertical novelty adds a lot of meaning and depth over the long haul. Both of these, vertical and horizontal, take courage, honesty, and integrity to build this kind of marriage that lasts a long time and keeps sex really exciting for the long haul. Anyway, I hope you and your spouse find this podcast episode helpful. If you'd please rate us online, that'd be fantastic. If you haven't yet, download the Intimately Us app, which is full of tons of tools and tips to add more uh, vertical and horizontal novelty to your relationship. If you like this episode, check out the other podcast episodes we've done. And also check out GetYourMarriageOn.com for other great content. And we'll see you next week. We hope that you enjoyed this episode of Get Your Marriage On. And if you did, we would love it if you would take a few seconds to give us a rating on iTunes and to share the show with your friends. They'll thank you for life. Once you've done that, you can head over to GetYourMarriageOn.com for more resources about today's topic and to download our amazing marriage apps. Now go get your marriage on.